Welcome to season two of the Small Town Big Dreams podcast. Hi, I'm Becky Waples, and this is the podcast that celebrates small town creators and shares their stories. Each week, we dive into each creator's journey, from their background to where they found their courage, from their challenges to their wins, where they found their inspiration to how they took their first step. I cannot wait to chat, laugh, and inspire the next small town creator with each of my guests. If you are inspired by small town creators who turn their big dreams into reality, then this is the podcast for you. Please rate and subscribe to all upcoming episodes. Please follow on Instagram and Facebook and always feel free to leave a message or comment to let me know what you'd like to hear or who you'd like to hear from. This little passion project is turning into quite the adventure and I'm so glad you've come along for the ride. Thank you from the bottom of this small town creator's big heart. Let's grow together. Thank you for joining me today, David and Kristen. Dimmick, right? Is that how you pronounce your last name? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And you guys are from Southampton? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Kristen, you reached out to me because you, because David's an artist. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. What was like the goal? What was the goal to be here today? I think, one, I love that you're highlighting, you know, these local mm-hmm. businesses, these local people doing you know, living there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. That's exactly what we're doing. And we really um, love the idea of supporting local businesses and promoting that. Um, and just David's, you know, emerging artist, he's new in his career. So it's great to have an opportunity to let people know about him. Yeah. 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 David is excited. Are you from Southampton? No, we're not from Southampton. Okay. Where are you guys from? Um, I'm from Sundridge, like near North Bay. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I grew up in Tilsonburg. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you guys meet? Let's start from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we went to high school together at oh, okay. a school near Niagara Falls. Oh, so okay. kind of met there in grade 11. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. And we got married our, after our first year of university. We went to University of Waterloo together. And mm-hmm. then, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And what brought you up to the Southampton area? Uh, we came for work. Yes. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Okay. And do you guys both work full time? Yeah. Yeah. Right. But you're here today because you are an artist, David. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> and I know you've obviously always been an artist. Yeah. Was it like an art school that you guys went to? If you were no, both from? No. Oh. And I, I'm not like a trained artist. Um, so I've always done. I always was interested in art since I was young. Um, but I was always steered away from doing art. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my parents kind of had the idea that I would be a engineer. And that right. That's mm-hmm. what they wanted me to do. And that's what I wanted to do too. Okay. Um, but I always liked like the drafting part of it and the creating part, like being, uh, yeah, being able to z- design stuff and, mm-hmm. and make stuff. So I think that was kind of, kind of building blocks towards being an artist and, um, and yeah, it's only been the last, well, like off and on over the last maybe seven or eight years, I started doing more art with the kids and right. kind of exploring different mediums. And then, um, only in the last, like maybe three years, I've really started focusing in on oil painting and, and yeah, and it's just kind of taken off in the mm-hmm. last, last couple of years. So. Very cool. Yeah. When you started painting, had you always thought that you would like make a business out of it, or was it more of a hobby? Or no, like originally, yeah. um, like we had always talked about having a small business. Okay, um, yeah. But I always kind of thought it would be more geared towards like engineering. And Kristen is like a project manager. Oh yeah, and uh, does like construction project management type stuff. So. I always thought it would be more geared towards that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, And then, yeah, when I started painting, originally I was just kind of doing it for fun to when we were stuck at home, something to do. And and yeah, I think I I had started posting a little bit um, like on social media. And I think probably like a lot of people at that time, I was ready to just like delete all my social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything was so negative. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but then I was kind of like, oh, I, I'm maybe if I posted something positive yeah. or something, you know. So I started posting some of my art just just to kind of balance all the negativity. And <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, I started, started selling art and then, then we kind of realized... 
yeah, it was probably worth trying to trying to make something of it. So, That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. We uh, entered some of your work uh, into the Southampton Art Gallery okay. last spring okay, uh, to get for the jury process. And he was juried in and it was kind of at that point that that happened. And we said, OK, let's go and yeah. put everything together yeah. pretty quickly to to make it official, I guess. OK. Yeah. And by official, do you mean like you have a business yes. license? Very cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you sell mostly online or do you sell through the art gallery as well? Both. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it, his works at the Southampton Art Gallery. There is a little business down in Ripley okay. uh, called Collective Co. So she does mainly consignment, but she started bringing in different vendors. So some of his work is down there uh, and then online shows. And we have our own website as well. Okay. Instagram. I post mostly on Instagram. That's yeah. where the new stuff comes up all the time. But I try to keep the website as up to date as well. Yeah, possible. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say on the creative scale, I'm way more musical. So oh, yeah. tell me about like, what do you normally paint? I think it's landscapes. Yeah, a lot of landscapes. Um, kind of done a little bit of everything. I haven't really done any abstract Okay. Um, work mostly like landscapes or still lives. I've painted uh, some animals. Um, I like painting animals. It's okay. A good challenge. Yeah. Mostly natural world type things, landscapes, right. animals. Yeah. Uh, there, you, you've done some a lot of life. I was. And, yeah, and that would be, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But yeah, some still life as well. Just yeah. whatever. Yeah. Whatever inspired you, inspired yeah. right? Yeah. You get bored easily. <laughs> yeah. It has to, it has to change yeah. it up. And then um, you mentioned oil painting. Yeah. Have you experimented with other yeah. mediums or? Yeah, like I started um, probably going back eight years. A good friend of mine um, up at a camp we help run in the summer. He's a spray paint like a oh, artist. Very cool. Um, so I kind of started doing that with him really? just to kind of. Like we were teaching kids how to spray paint and stuff, and cool. Um, so I I picked it up. A leg- up legally enough. teaching kids, yeah, how to spray paint. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I kind of I kind of dabbled with that, and that's kind of what I guess got me started. Yeah, doing some graffiti painting. Um, but I've done I've done acrylics. I still do. A little bit of acrylics and watercolors. Um, I, I just find, water, yeah, sorry. more watercolors. Yeah, more watercolors than acrylic. I find watercolors are a lot more portable. So if I'm like traveling or sketching right. places, I can pull out like a watercolor pad and do a quick sketch. Cool. Whereas taking oil painting around is a lot more involved. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do that as well. Um, and we do we do sell quite a few watercolor paintings too. But I prefer working in oil. I just like okay. like the look of it better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so you kind of mentioned that you wanted to start your own business originally. Like, that's always been, like, on the back burner of your plan. Yeah. yeah. And what inspired you to want to be an entrepreneur? I think being our own boss. Yeah. A of it, right? Like, yeah. And we've always had that drive. My parents own their own business. Okay. Um, and so I've always been kind of on the – I've been the, the – ch- you know – the kid that was going in to clean the store and having a family business kind of environment. So right. I kind of like that for our kids. We try to involve them as much as possible. Um, I think it, you've always just, it's always, as long as I've known you, you've always been driven that way. Yeah. yeah. To just create or to just do things, be your own right. person, right? Yeah. Um, and I think our skills really line up yeah 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 you know like uh, like dave mentioned we were gonna we were considering going an an engineering route but he always talks about you know i'd love to you know design you know someone wants a really artistic shed or something like that and and always had the idea of art in that somehow Mm -hmm. um and i've always been you know business side of yeah 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 my excel spreadsheet yeah 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 yeah. things like that right the management scheduling side of stuff so we've always worked well that a good partnership yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. um my parents work together Mm -hmm. so i only know parents that work they were teachers but they were always together yeah Mm -hmm. i've always thought i want to work with my husband Mm -hmm. always i've always thought that (laughs) um like having the same schedule my dad used to make my mom her lunch every day 
Yeah, so I, was like, <laughs> I just want to eat lunch with you every day. I don't know. It seems weird to me that you would go to separate places. Like I've yeah. done that my whole, our whole relationship, but yeah. it does seem weird to me. So I was wondering if like working together has been a goal as well. I don't know if it's specifically that. I mean, we do. We you know we've been married yeah. for twenty one years. Wow. Now. Yeah. Um, we still like each other. So. Yeah, that's important. <laughs> but yeah, like, we're, we're, like I love working from home right now. I'm a hybrid. Okay. Uh, so I'm home a lot and uh, David works shift. So we have a lot of days together. And, you know, that's kind of how it goes. I'm working in my office. He's painting on right. his days off. And mm-hmm. we s- stop and have lunch together. Maybe I love for a that. Walk and See, I love that. We, we really, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I guess it just, like like you said, it was normal for you with your parents. Yeah. It's just kind of normal. Yeah. Right. How, how we... How and we, I think too, like right. our our skill sets are like work really well together. Or like Kristen's kind of naturally does the administration. Right. And I do the creative stuff, but at the same time, Kristen is also very artistic and very creative, and has a good eye for art. Nice. And I can be organized <laughs> <laughs> and, and do some of the administration if I need to. Yeah. Um, so th- yeah, so there is a little bit of overlap where, where our skills complement each other, but like I'll often be painting and yeah. I'll, I'll yell into Kristen and be like, Hey, come look at this and tell yeah. me if this looks off or whatever. Right. And she has just has a good eye. Yeah. We, uh, I'm, I'm probably his biggest critic. Yeah. I, don't, <laughs> I, I, I tell him what I think, honestly, um, right. our youngest daughter, she, we, we laugh about it all the time because I I feel like I'm giving constructive criticism. Yes, yeah. that's, that's how David takes it. Yeah, but she came down. I and I can't remember exactly when it was, but she came down and she was looking at his new painting, and she, he she looked at him and said, "Has has mommy insulted your new painting yet?" <laughs> <laughs> what specifically does she not like about this one? Yeah. <laughs> that's really cute. Yeah. I was going to ask if you guys have a um, how do you navigate your business around your young family. Uh, well, they're not super young anymore. Like our oldest is 15. Oh, okay. So 15, 13, 11. So it's more involving them. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, our youngest is particularly artistic and okay. interested. So she likes to paint mm-hmm. with David. Um, around Christmas time, sometimes we do some watercolor cards or tags and she she gets involved in that. Yeah. She like she loves going into the gallery. If he's ever there for a day painting, she's there too. Um and then we 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 have done some like vendor market type mm-hmm. events where we have a table and the girls come with me. I like that. Uh, and uh they run the table. We're teaching them how to run the table. Like so uh especially so then our middle one she's 13. Uh, she's gotten really good at running the table and it helps her talk, learn to talk to people, to, you know, make change, to, to do all those kind of yeah. business type stuff. So it gives them a job to do and they like doing it because we pay them to do it. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. family business. So, yeah, we just involve them as much I love as we that. can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our middle daughter's always been an entrepreneur. Oh, I love that. Oh, she, uh, she starts like plants in the spring okay the gardens and then yeah she'll, she'll sell those or whatever, i love you know, that and gets her spending money for the summer uh and she's all with all of the plants in the yard yes <laughs> yeah yeah all of our plants yeah <laughs> my dad's a big gardener our goal is to make a big garden every yeah. summer we're like just don't have time but yeah. i want to even weld the voice yeah. too and I love when they go to my dad's house, they just like sneak out to the backyard and grab a raspberry, yes. grab a cherry tomato. <laughs> One day they grabbed a chili pepper and learned really quickly that you have to ask about which word in the you <laughs> yeah. can grab the food. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about uh, Dimmick Studio. So you said it, when did it actually, when did you register your business license? Uh, April 2023. Okay. So it's, it's almost going to be a year old. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, how do you, I want to know more like, who are your customers? Like, do you have like, regular is like i mean um i think at the start it was a lot of friends and family okay so really supportive friends yeah. and family and kind of branched out from there and got some collectors buying okay it. So lots of like repeat collectors yeah and, uh, buying and then um i don't know through the markets i guess mm-hmm like random people right <laughs> yeah <laughs> someone coming in i'm sure um people come to 
Southampton or Port right. Island for a vacation, they go in. And some people buy art when they're on vacation. Um, the goal is that you connect with your yeah. with collectors that really love your work, and then they, you know, build a you know a collection of, See, of yeah. those pieces. So that's kind of our business goal this year is um, finding ways to connect with with people kind of out. You know, we're, we're starting to connect with people outside of our bubble, right? Right. Uh, so through these online shows, um, there's lots of art competitions. Right, uh, entering things into those to kind of get his name out there a little bit more. I like that, right? and and it's starting to work. There's some exciting yeah. things happening that I can't really talk about yet. Okay, but, but that's exciting. But, yeah, up and coming for this summer. So, yeah. mm-hmm. but you don't um, do you just sell your paintings? Because um, or you said mentioned cards as well, mm-hmm. or prints. Yeah, yeah prints yeah. and cards. The watercolors are a little different than um, the the oil paintings. There, right. Uh, you know, just a different type of art and price point. And how do you price your paintings? So we looked at a bunch of different models for how to price it. Um, and the one I liked the best was uh, basically it's kind of like a square inch, like price per square inch. Okay. Um, so that way you can kind of have a consistent approach to pricing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it factors in fairly well, like time and materials. Um, the only issue is when you get to smaller paintings, you have to kind of bump the price right. up. And when you get to really big paintings, you got to bump, bump the price so down. So it's not totally linear, but um, for the most part, that's that's kind of the best approach we found just to keep the pricing consistent. And then we kind of reevaluate every year or so okay. and decide if we need to bump the price up or keep the price the same. Right. And, yeah. 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 And then the watercolors are a little different. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're they're more just a set price yeah. per size, kind of. Yeah, yeah. But I don't have a lot of variation in the size no. I do no. for. Are you ready to live kindly, confidently, and ridiculously happy? Me too. I'm Sophia Lemon, and I host Ridiculously Happy People Cast. Once a week, I sit down with an awesome person I want to learn from, and we talk about how in the heck to balance life. Throw on your sweats and prepare to laugh, cry, and even cringe as we talk about all the bullshit that comes along with living ridiculously happy. Subscribe to Ridiculously Happy People Cast, and that's PPL Cast, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you find your podcasts, and get your shit together with us. I'm Lauren Best, and in my podcast, I have conversations with compelling creatives and answer your questions. I dive into what I've learned as a voice coach and performance poet, and share why over 15 years of music leadership has shaped my collaborative approach. I reveal how I've reawakened my own creativity. Subscribe to my new show, Lauren's Best, wherever you get your podcasts. Join me on Substack for exclusive bonus content, laurenbest.substack.com. I follow um, another local artist, and she posted uh, this week, because I need art on my wall. (laughs) Um, She posted this week, or maybe it was a couple weeks ago, that there's an incentive right now to buy Canadian art. Yeah. And can you explain that? Sure. Um, Right now, if you buy Canadian art, and it has to be Canadian, right? No, you can't be a Canadian and purchase it outside of Canada. Oh, okay. Um, assuming that they charge you HST, then yeah. it becomes a tax write-off. Yeah. And is it the full price of the painting? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. As far as I know. Okay. Because I saw that and I said, well, then. As long as you charge tax on it, yeah. Okay. So And you charge tax on yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, perfect. And, oh, I wrote here. Do you do most of your painting in a studio or do you do it outside? Where do you feel like the most? Um, I've done most of mine in studio. Okay. Which is actually our living room. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you need a shed. I yeah. need to yeah. buy a house with a shed. So yeah. the, the And I'd, I'd like to get uh, painting more outside. I just haven't had time yet. And um, kind of the pattern that I've been in the last th- three years or so yeah. since I started um, like I do a lot of camping in the summer mm-hmm. and traveling and get lots of good reference pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've tried taking my paints with me when I go camping. Yeah. And then I end up just fishing all day and yeah. <laughs> not having time to paint. Yeah. So, Priority. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, I, it's something I would like to do more of um, to do more like plein air right. on location type stuff. Um, but just doesn't work right now with with what we're doing. So 
um, hopefully, hopefully this summer and fall, we'll have some time to get outside and do, mm-hmm. do a bit more, but yeah, mostly now I, I just do everything in studio and it's good too, cause I can control the light right. and turn music on really loud. Yeah. Kind of do my thing, which yep. is, which works good. Let's talk a little bit about exciting projects that are coming up. Yeah. April 11th through 13th, he will have, um, uh, is it four pieces? That you're doing for the Square Foot show? Yeah. Four, four pieces, four. Uh, four or five uh, online. Uh, it's called the Square Foot Show. So okay. it's uh, artists across North America. They sell internationally. Uh, and it's just really quick and online. And uh, the idea is with these online shows, they're almost run like an auction. Like you don't get a preview okay. far ahead of time. Uh, they're all a set price. So most of them you're going to get a piece at uh, kind of a reduced cost from oh. from what an artist would typically sell that piece for. Uh, and then it's really quick and fast. And, and the I like it because the show administrators take care of all like the fun and like the, right. the transfer of funds. And then they tell you who to send your art to and you ship it. Cool. Yeah. So that's exciting. Mm-hmm. What's the, sorry, I'm all over the place, but what's the majority of the size that you paint? Like I'm thinking... um, I paint kind of down to eight by ten for oil oh, okay. paint would be kind of the smallest, and then uh, ooh, the biggest I've done is probably five foot by eight foot. For, wow! For, yeah. And you've got five, uh, seven foot by three foot. That's that's your next yeah, that's project. My next group of paintings I'm going to be doing is uh, there's some really big ones. There, yeah, is. yeah, it's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you do commission art? Yeah, yeah. I do quite a few commission pieces. I try and like keep a good balance. I like doing commission pieces, um, but sometimes you kind of get people wanting very specific things, and yeah. it's not always something that I'm like super excited. Yeah, about. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and you tell them if it's yeah, something you it's can't something, capture. Yeah. Like occasionally you you'll get someone you that, like, and like I had a request one time for someone to paint their wedding portrait, oh. and I don't really do portraits like or faces. people in general yeah <laughs> and so i was just like uh yeah like yeah i'd love to but i don't think that would really work yeah um i love like i've painted a few um like people's pets i like right. doing that type of thing and um i like i like doing commissions because you know it makes people happy people are excited to yeah. see what i what i produce so i like i like doing that mm-hmm. um and I'd, I'd say probably half of Maybe what I'm painting are commissions, and the yeah. rest is for yeah. It, like, it, it you know varies, right? Yeah, about that. Yeah. I think you like the challenge of yeah, it, you know, taking that memory or that you know picture of a pet or whatever it right. is, and and see try, you know yeah creating that that piece that someone would love. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Are most of your customers from the Bruce County region? Or it sounds like since you can buy online, you could sell. All yeah, over the place. We, I'd, I'd say probably a lot are like Grey Bruce. Right. Um, we've sold some in Collingwood. There's some that have shipped out east, like mm-hmm. PEI. Very cool. Uh, mm-hmm. Lots ship out west. So yeah. we're kind of all over Canada. I don't know if we've shipped any into the States like, international mm-hmm. yet, but yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, because uh, I'm asking, I'm trying to find out, like, from PEI, how did they find you? Like... So that one was through a show we did in Tiverton. That's so, yeah. Yeah. So, so Kristen, you must be the one looking for all the art shows. Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I I don't think it's a theory, but I always think like there's people out there that have this passion to start their own business. And then they're like, I don't know how to do A, B, or C. And then they kind of, they're like, they're just like hope kind of dies. Yeah. So it sounds like in this partnership, you're, you do the, like the, like obviously we've talked about the admin work, but yeah. also like um you just get to be the creative. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. 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 And it's yeah, it's good because I don't know, sometimes Kristen's like, Oh, I just feel like, you know, you're doing all of the business and you like you're the most important part. And it's like if it was me painting, I would just be painting stuff. Yeah. And then be giving his painting. That's what it, exactly. And, yeah. And yeah. Moving on, right? Like and yeah. And so without without Kristen kind of pushing me to to sell stuff and to get into galleries and mm-hmm. 
um, making those connections. But at the same time, be happening at all. if you didn't paint, we wouldn't have yes. this business either, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I do, um, and I would be your role, Kristen. Like mm-hmm. I'm not very creative, but my, and I, I wouldn't, my husband's not an artist, but my husband would be really good at like doing those dirty jobs. Yeah. yeah. yeah but sure. then he would have like, he'd be like, I didn't know what to charge them. Yeah. yeah. I didn't follow up <laughs> to see if they paid me. So then that would be like my goal, my role yeah. as well, yeah. mm-hmm. just to make it like a viable business so yeah. that uh, we're successful. Yeah. 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 So it just feels like, I just wanted to say that it feels like you guys are doing a really good partnership. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how does, I always, cause it's the small, cause the podcast is called small towns, big dreams. Mm-hmm. Um, Tilsonburg, small town. Yeah. What would the population of Tilsonburg mean? I think when I lived there it was about 15,000. Oh, so that's me. That's a big town. <laughs> <laughs> I think for that area though, it's considered small. Yeah. 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 Felt small town. And what did you say your town was called? Sunridge. It's Sunridge. Like 900 population. Yeah. yeah okay. Smaller. Yeah. I was like, I'm from Lion's Head, which is like oh. 500. So that's why I was like, 50? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but okay, yeah, center, near yeah. North Bay, right? Yeah. yeah. I have cut, I have family up in North oh, Bay. But... Okay. Well, we lived in, on Mantillo Island for a couple yeah. of years, too. Oh, nice. Um, and we lived in Kagawan, and I'm not even sure what the population is. It's probably closer to 300. Or... If that. What, what is it called? Yeah. Kaiwan? Kagawan. Kag- is that on the island? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be small. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How does living in a small town contribute to Dimmick Studio? Yeah, like I think for me, like from the art side of things, um, having like the art gallery and the art school in town is yeah. pretty neat. Like for a small town to have like such a, I guess, big art community. Right. Um, to me, that's really good and really important. And, and I've kind of used that and connections through there to to learn more like getting into to being an artist and selling art I found very daunting yeah yeah. (laughs) so kind of making those connections and having people I can bounce ideas off of yeah ask questions and and different things like that it's been really good and and the community's been very supportive and Mm -hmm. welcoming as well so that for me that's Mm -hmm. the the biggest thing I think too because of what you like to paint yeah you know, the natural world and mm-hmm. beaches and sunsets and, and hiking through the woods and canoes and farms. You've, you paint a lot of farm land and, and the, it's it's what Bruce County is. Right? Yeah. Um, but also, I feel like there's a really big community here that, that supports small town and local and, and it's growing. I can see it growing bigger all the time. Yeah. This real movement to to support people who are local and are trying to do yeah. you know their you know small town big dreams right yeah yeah, so yeah. I, I think that's really neat too it's yeah just very supportive um yeah, yeah. I think that about our uh, community as well mm-hmm. yeah um I don't know how to word this question but you work shift work yeah and I hear like I my husband doesn't work shift work thank like I'm <laughs> thankful for that but a lot of my friends husbands work shift work and it's not always deemed upon nicely, but it sounds like for you, this is the best. Like, oh, yeah. It gives you the opportunity to work. Yeah. For yeah. I think, I think it was definitely harder shift work when the kids were younger and, then, yeah, and, you know, then. and I couldn't support as much at home. Um, now that they're older and they're fairly well self-sufficient, like being on shift gives me lots of days off. Yeah. It gives mm-hmm. me stretches of time off as well yeah um, so I can work on some of these bigger projects so yeah um yeah, yeah kind of like I'm working 12 hour rotating shifts so compressing compressing a week's worth of work into like a weekend means that that frees up yeah, yeah, time yeah. during the week right so. yeah um like because when you said that because we I literally had this conversation this week um, she was like, when do you, uh, my friends were like, well, when do you see your husband? And then the other friend was like, he doesn't work shift work. And I'm like, oh, and I'm just like, and I was, took it away. Like, thank goodness. Could, only because of from that conversation. Yeah. And then when you mentioned that you work shift, my brain was like, wait a second, that would be good for an entrepreneur yeah. having all that extra yeah. time. Yeah. I mean, I would never want to work 12 hours. You know, <laughs> neither would I. <laughs> I never don't want to work nights, yeah. but, um, in sense for a small business or even in sense for a creative yeah. business. It, it, it's And it works good to like, because I'm not doing the administrative stuff, like I can come off of a night shift, wake up, 
and be kind of groggy half asleep. Yeah. But I can still like be creative and right. if I'm not because it's a, you're using a different part of your brain, right? Yeah. So, so I'm not, yeah, not trying to concentrate on numbers or do anything. I would say, like yeah. That, right? Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that time where normally before I started painting, I would just be kind of wasting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I can do something. David never wastes time. No. Now <laughs> we're always too busy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I also like that you said you was, now that your kids are self sufficient. Yeah. yeah. I feel like when my kids are self-sufficient, what will I be able to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, have you faced any challenges by being in a small town? I think getting supplies, like oh, okay. really specific to the art business, it's harder to get yeah. the supplies we need. At I was gonna say, that's I didn't know at a cost that's that's reasonable reasonable yeah. for us, right? That's true. Um. And then there's some things that you, there's just like, they're not available here at all. So uh, uh, getting prints done, I don't, we haven't found anywhere really local for that. Godrich is the closest and it's a really great gallery down there that, that does some really beautiful prints, but it's still, you know, that's a, that's a fair drive away to get yeah things done. Um, not the day to drive down and back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You just went down for those big panels and that was a three hour drive for those so you know it, it you have to either order online and yeah. we try to we try as much as we can to support smaller businesses right uh it would be nice if they were really local but if not you know the small business somewhere in, in ontario right yeah um, that that's probably the biggest thing i think yeah so let's talk about uh the business aspect i always like to ask like do you have a business hack like if someone wanted to be an artist and they were like, I can't make a business out of it. Like what was like a hack that started so that you could make a business out of it? And it's maybe it was marrying Kristen. That, but <laughs> that's that, actually one of your own. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah I, I think the biggest thing is just to like keep practicing and, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. like put yourself out there. Right. Um, and for me, like I'm still very like self-critical of my art and I'm always like I always don't think it's good enough yeah and Kristen's like well you know I like it I would hang it on my in my house so yes yeah. let's, mm -hmm. let's put and it and if I house. don't like it I tell you I was gonna say yeah. if yeah. your toughest yeah. critic likes yeah. it then <laughs> so and it and it definitely helps like when I when I was starting out a lot of friends and family support which is good and I'm very mm -hmm. appreciative for that but it helps legitimize myself as an artist when, like, other people I yeah. don't know start buying art, right? Yeah. That I've created. Or, or it gets juried into, yeah. you know, an organization like the Southampton Art Gallery, yeah. or you walk into a gallery somewhere and they recognize you from Instagram or something. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's neat. Yeah. So that's, that's the biggest, like, hack, I guess, if it's a hack, is to, to just keep working at it and keep doing something that you love get it out there and mm -hmm. in front of people and um and yeah mm -hmm. i think i would have planned things out a little better looking back a year ago but it kind of happened quickly right yeah. right as far as you know registering the business and things we didn't really have time to come up with a yeah fully flesh like business plan but uh yeah. It's it's been okay. My my five year goals kind of turned into like a three month. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that and really fast. That and really yeah. fast. Yeah. yeah. So I interviewed the Bruce County Economic Development. Did you reach out to anybody in there that went? I, I've taken like I've I've jumped on some of their Call. webinars right. that yeah. they do, uh, and that's been helpful. Yeah, yeah. And also, do you outsource any of your business? I always like to ask that too. Did like the printing, that would be it. I don't, I don't know if you would, yeah, I guess you consider that outsourcing because we could technically purchase, you know, a printer, a, a, <laughs> a, you know, the the proper equipment. For yeah. It, but that would be it. Everything else we do. Very cool. Working on taxes right now. Yeah, yeah. No, I am too. <laughs> what did you do before you were a project manager? Uh, oh, well, um, Stop me if I go back too far, but <laughs> uh, I went to school for biochemistry. Oh, wow. Okay. So that was, you know, I graduated in 2006. I worked at the University of Waterloo for a little bit. Um, 
life happened and we decided we didn't really like living in the city. Uh, David was working um, as an engineer at the time in Guelph, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so then we kind of took an opportunity on Manitoulin Transport. Or, sorry. Manitoulin Island. Manitoulin Island. Yeah, I ended up working at Manitoulin Transport okay. for a while. Uh, and that we were there for a couple of years. And, and then life happened again. And uh, David ended up down here uh, working at Bruce Power. And uh, I uh, we had a child then, our first child. And then I was expecting it. So then I stayed home. Okay. Uh, I just kind of didn't have a job to go back to. And we had young kids. You uh, volunteered. Yeah, I did a lot of volunteer work. I'm not one to sit still. Um, and then in 2019, I thought it's time to go back to work, but there's not a whole lot of biochemistry opportunities <laughs> here. So, and and it had been a while. So I started taking project management courses uh, part time, um, and got a few of those done. And then COVID happened, and that stopped that for a little while. But during that time, I got connected with the job I'm working at now. And I graduate with my project management essentials uh, in April this year. Ah, So I finally finished. Which is good. Uh, Yeah. And then now my contract's done at the end of March. So I'm looking at for the next opportunity. Cool. Be nice it was a Dimmick Studio. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But that's the goal to stick with Dimmick Studio. Would you want that to be your full-time job or? Oh, yeah. That's it. Support, yeah, yeah, for sure. I think, I think I have to win the the art. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't come with a pension. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, for now, like, I don't mind doing it part time. Like, I can still mm-hmm. produce a pretty high volume of art, and um, yeah, that's something. Obviously, something I could do during retirement, and something I can do when we're retired, and yeah building the business then yeah yeah be ideal i always want i always think like i want to create something just so my children watch me create something and that's yeah. exactly what you're doing yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and then inspiring like you said your youngest is an artist as well yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and teaching them like the one sorry the markets you go to are they in this area yeah but not uh kind of branched out one was okay. the one was a uh, ripley um newstat we went to newstat nice uh so just kind of, you know, yeah. branching out, um, and they really like doing. That. I was gonna say, so, yeah, mm-hmm. I teaching your girls that, and then they make money, and then they spend it all at the market. But that's oh fine. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I always like to finish with a fire round, um, and I just wrote a couple things down here. But uh, where's your favorite place to vacation? You said you're you like to camp. Oh yeah, um, probably Tomogamy is where okay. we go the most. Uh, just like Crown Land camping and back country. Uh, I was going to say Mexico. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mexico. I was going to ask you if you had the same answer. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kristen likes likes the all inclusive. Yeah. yeah. She comes with me back country camping. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's your favorite thing to do as a family? Camping or family movie night. Yeah. We like family movie nights. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, where is your favorite? date place go on a date we don't have a favorite place we try to yeah mix it up Mm -hmm. whether it's up for dinner or walk on the beach or hike we do a lot of things cool Mm -hmm. cool and then i always like to thank you guys for coming and then um, yeah we i always ask how we can find you so we have a website uh dimicstudio.ca uh and instagram also dimic studio uh, and then it's in the Southampton Art Gallery mm-hmm. and at Collective Co. Okay. in Ripley. Um, and then uh, the online show. And, okay. Uh, some other opportunities that will be coming up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks, David and Kristen. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'll continue. Yeah. Mm-hmm.